Welcome back to another Tech Tip video from BJB. BJB manufactures a wide variety of plastic products, and navigating through them takes a basic understanding of the characteristics that differentiate them. One of the main features we use to do that is durometer. Quite simply, how hard the product is. We use two main shore hardness scales, shore A and shore D. Shore A is used on softer, more flexible elastomers, and the Shore D scale is used for hard rubbers up to rigid plastics. We also occasionally use the Double Lot scale for extremely soft products like gels and anything extra squishy. Each scale ranges in value from 0 to 100. The higher the number, the harder the product is on that scale. The confusing thing about the different scales for many people is that the scales overlap. The best way to make sense of all this is to visually look at the scales and discuss the actual durometer measuring gauges. The gauges themselves have a couple of important differences. The spring force gets progressively higher as you go from the double lot gauge, the shore A gauge, and onto the shore D gauge. Also, the point on the presser foot gets progressively sharper as you go from double lot, shore A, and onto the shore D gauge. So now we can explain why we pick a spot on the overlapping scales to end one shore type and begin a new one. For example, the sharper point on the shore D durometer would pierce the surface of many soft elastomers and give us false readings. This is why we end the shore A product line at a 95A and continue on in the D scale. We wouldn't refer to a product being a 20 or 30 shore D for exactly this reason. Having said that, we do have to note that a 90 shore A product also measures to approximately a 40 shore D, and a 95A a 45D. It can be a bit of a gray area. One is not right, and one is not necessarily wrong. In this case, we would look at a few other properties of a material to determine whether to put them in a shore A or shore D category, like elongation or tear strength. If you do happen to have a set of durometer gauges, you should know that accurate readings are taken on samples with a minimum thickness of one quarter inch parallel to the surface, and readings are taken within one second of pressing down. Many gauges have an extra red dial that records the highest reading, so that can take out some of the guesswork. More info on durometer can be found on Wikipedia, and test methods are available through ASTM on their website. Let's examine some common objects that might relate durometer to something a little easier to understand. At the lower end of our board, we have the double lot scale. Objects found here would be gel bike seats, gel shoe inserts, or chewing gum. Moving up a little bit into our lower shore A scale, we have something that most of us can relate to, our skin. Now, depending on where you take the measurement, yikes! Wrong gauge, that's the uh, shore D scale. <clears throat> As I was saying, depending on where you place the durometer, you'll probably come up with a number somewhere between about a five and 15 shore A. One of our softer silicone mold materials, TC5024, is a 25 shore A. This allows easy removal of parts with undercuts or extreme detail. A common pencil eraser comes in around 40A. Automobile tires range from about 60 to 70 Shore A. This range is actually one of our most popular durometers for flexible polyurethanes. Going up a little higher, we have a urethane skateboard wheel at 83A. This is your softer, longboard cruising style wheel. A hard vinyl garden hose measures about 90A. And then we start crossing over scales to roughly a 40 shore D, which is in line with the hardness of a typical caster or shopping cart wheel. This harder ramp style skateboard wheel, meant for smooth surfaces, measures in at 53D. Injection molded plastics we're familiar with like polypropylene plastic food containers or high density polyethylene can vary from about a 60 to 70 shore D. These are hard, tough, very high impact plastics that still exhibit a little bit of flex. ABS plastic ranges from about 75 to 82 shore D. 
This rigid plastic is all around us in various forms of consumer products. And at the upper part of our board, at 85D, are very hard plastics like this CD case. Other hard plastics in this range are acetyl delrin, nylon, and epoxies, just to name a few. As I said before, BJB manufactures an extremely wide variety of products, spanning these shore hardness ranges. All liquid, castable systems you can mold for a variety of part requirements. I'll leave you with one last thought about durometer and part thickness. Using these step samples, we can see how a flexible material might feel different in thinner sections versus thicker sections. The same goes for rigid materials. Something in a thicker section will feel extremely stiff, but in a thinner section might surprise you how much you can flex it. So keep this in mind when designing around your part's geometry and wall thickness. Well, that's it for now. Feel free to ask any questions in the comments below or contact us by phone or email through our website. We're always happy to hear from our customers and help take the mystery out of materials. 